Shooting it raw? Yes. Shooting it raw. Ah, uh, okay. Okay, so this... This, this one is totally different. Yeah. <laughs> it's great. But wait a second. Okay, so it's, it's a... Okay, so it's a funny... So I just realized there's a picture in picture. So because yes. the, main Im- the main image it shows one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, about eight guys and one woman in a kitchen making a kind of communal meal. And yep. then the picture in picture shows what looks like could be a chef, could be in the same kitchen, could be just a different view. Yep. Yeah, it's a different. Is it a different? Oh, yeah. It's a, yeah, it's a different. A different view. It's in the same. It's in the same kitchen. So yeah, what so you're what describing is, is entirely correct. That was a communal meal, and what we did, what we did. So I have a website that's called Got to Eat Can't Cook. Say that again. I have a website that's called Got to Eat. So G O T T A hyphen. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the website. the The okay. real, real title of, of of the whole thing is Got to Eat Can't Cook. Nice. It's for people who were like me at 21. I didn't have an idea about how to cook, but all of a sudden we're on their own. Mm. So it's either you go out to meals all the time or you learn how to cook. And so this is actually about enabling people to empower themselves. And so, oh, and you know what, Ron, this, this applies entirely to cycling. It applies to life and just in general. Yes. But I can't empower you. You can't empower me. The only way you're empowered is when you take that internally into your body. You go, okay, mm-hmm. I'm going to take these skills and now I'm, I'm going to empower myself. And so it's the same thing with, with cooking. So I put together this site and I would approach uh, health insurance, hospitals, medical organizations, all of these people. No interest. Why? Oh, we want hospital beds full. And now that's rather cynical, what? unfortunately. That's weird. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. And so it's and nobody. I mean, I, I worked with a with UMass Medical School students one semester, um, making meals with them, and they, I was working with a dietitian at the at the school, and mm-hmm. I she said, you know, you ought to come check out what we're doing. So I was working with the with the students. Um, helping them with meals, you know, assisting. And then I brought some stuff with some, you know, some recipes that I, that I did myself and we worked together and I taught that to the medical students who were mostly third, like around third year. I said, how much nutrition do you get in medical school? Uh, oh. No, we get none. We get one hour exactly. of prenatal nutrition. That's it. So yep. for women who are pregnant, that's it. Well, what did Hippocrates, every one of these medical students, when they graduate, you know, at their graduation, We'll be reciting the Hippocratic Oath, which is do no mm. no more harm to anybody than you would to help them. You know, I'm paraphrasing. But yeah. Hippocrates also said, let food be thy medicine. So let nutrition be thy medicine and nutrition and uh, medicine be your, your, your you know, your, your medicine is your nutrition. All right. about what you eat. And but yep. 2000 years ago. And yet they don't do that. So it's all about, you know, medicines and, and, and treatments and, and, it's, and our medical system is built on, here's what we're going to do at the end. So you already have a disease, right. not how we're going to prevent mm-hmm. it. So it's kind of like the safe streets for all of my brand It's about, all right, how do we get to the front of the line? Right. How can I help empower people to learn how to cook on their own. Yeah. So just like, so like in the photo, You've yep. got these guys, I guess, learning how to cook for themselves. Yep. Because many, you know, just haven't had that training as, you know, as boys or whatever. Right. So, I mean, is this a, a like a running program? Like, or is this just, was this just a one-off? Yeah. So I did this for about a year with a group called Veterans Incorporated out of Shrewsbury, Massachusetts. So one town over from where I lived in Westboro. And so these right. guys were all military veterans. They'd been on the outs somehow, either, you know, alcohol, drug addiction, whatever happened, homelessness. Mm-hmm. Now they had gone through through the treatment that they needed to be uh, to be sober or whatever, you know, to be reintegrated into society to come back. Mm-hmm. And so Veterans Incorporated was really a halfway house for them to learn how to. OK, now we're living on our own. And but now we're going after that. Now we're going to be back 
um, you know, surviving on our own, but right. surviving, not going back on the street. But now, you know, you have a skill, you're going to, you will have learned a skill. I'm working with these vets, showing them, you know, uh, helping them to, to cook on their own. And the proof was they started doing that on their own. And they would tell me, mm -hmm. I would say like every two weeks or something like that. And they would say, yeah, this is what we're doing. I heard later on that two of the guys went into food service. So they worked either in a yes. restaurant or somehow they were working in food service from, and I that wasn't the intent was to get somebody ready to work in that field, but two did. And, um, that's two out of maybe 20. So, you know, 10%. And, but mm -hmm. then the other guys were actually picking up these skills. And whenever, when I was, whenever I was doing what I was doing, it wasn't me being a sage on the stage, showing them and then, and then doing it. It was more like that idea. If you, if you give a person a fish, they've got one, they'll have one meal. But if you teach them how to fish, then they will be able to fend for themselves. They can make a stew for an army. Yeah, right. So, but, but when I was, like I say, here's how to hold a knife. Come on up here. Let's do this together. So they would come up and we would, and, and I would guide, but they would do a lot of the work themselves. And okay. um, it was a really good give and take. Was this uh, linked to with a nutritionist? Was this linked with a chef? Was this linked or was this just you? Like It was just me. It oh, was, really? It was, yeah, it was just me. And so. Family recipes? Yeah, yeah. Now the recipes, everything on my site is made with real ingredients, and so I now I don't say on this this is healthy food because if you say right. that it's actually, healthy is looked at. Some people say, oh, well, that's great. A majority of people look at it as, as a that the word healthy is a pejorative. You know, that's something. Oh, yeah. oh, we're eating right. healthy tonight. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should be yeah. eating. You should be eating life promoting foods regularly because that's how you're going. You know, no kidding. Are what you eat. Yep. And uh, those are the base materials that make up who you are. And so it makes sense to eat eat something. Again, back to Hippocrates. I agree with him entirely. Yep. And he's and here he is as this, you know, this figure in, in medicine that yeah, yeah, we, we need to aspire to him. Yet here, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm I'm showing a, you know one my hand in one direction with a finger connected to that. And let's just take that finger away and go, there's no connection at all. Really? But how often does that happen? You know, that happens to us in life all the time. It, it, it's, it's a disconnect. I can't remember if it was because I was hitchhiking or because I took the train. So I'd often hitchhike or take the train between Toronto and Montreal. And that's a 700 kilometer uh, or 500 mile distance. Mm -hmm. And one time uh, on the ride, the driver or a fellow passenger, um, and this was like 20 years ago or whatever, I was like, so what do you do? And he, and he said, oh, I'm teaching elderly men how to cook mm. because he's, like, he's an entrepreneur who started this company, basically teach skills that are so fundamental. Right. Uh, it's, it's, in his case, he was talking about like men over 70 or men over 60 who never knew how to cook and because they became widowers or divorced or whatever. Uh, and so that was a interesting parallel in that it's very peculiar that we live in a in a in a society or a culture where like a fundamental skill of how to cook for yourself and how to feed yourself is just missing and so in this uh photo you've got this community of people mm -hmm. learning how to cook who are kind of cooking for themselves and that gives them obviously the autonomy and everything but and in this case, these are vets, right? In the photo, mm -hmm. uh, I have to ask, who's the who's the woman then? She worked. For, she worked for Vet uh, Vets Inc. Veterans Incorporated. Okay, she was my uh, daily, you know, daily contact. Okay, so she was like your sous chef. No, no, she was no. She just happened to be wearing white that day, but no, no, she was just there, just checking out what we were doing, and she would come in, and the directors would come in every once in a while. Nice. Yeah, I mean. It was it was a it was really a, a good group of guys and boy I'll tell you I mean right off the bat right the first thing that I wanted to show them was how to make salad dressing because I find that to be the most versatile recipe you can use salad on salad right. you can put it on sandwich you know on a bunch of different things so I had this salad dressing that had uh, garlic see I think it was garlic powder some salt yeah salt mustard oil vinegar. A little bit of sugar and so one of the guys he was a navy so i was a navy guy myself and so this guy oh, okay. was a, 
And he goes, I, he goes, hey, 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 what, what are you doing with the salt in there? I said, well, you know, it's only a little bit, but I'm just, it's just for, for flavor. He said, and what about the sugar? I said, well, again, it's not a lot, but it's just, 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 just to add a little bit of flavor. He said, we don't need that. And he used another word for it. But uh, that might not be appropriate on the air. But you can say said, shit. You can totally say shit unless it's worse than that or whatever. Yeah. Oh, no, that, that's, so, so that's that's you know I won't say it. But anyway, that's what he. Uh, not that I. Have <laughs> he said that. He goes. We don't need this stuff. We got guys in here who have hypertension and diabetes. Some right. have both, and we don't need right. that. So I said, okay, okay, I'm going to make it without that. So I just used five ingredients. It was garlic powder. Pep, uh, ground pepper, mustard, oil, vinegar. That was it. Mm, Put those five yeah. ingredients together, and I'm thinking to myself, this is going to taste like that. So I make it, and I shake it up in a jar, and then I have these spoons, and I give it to the guys. I go, here, you know, give it a taste. It goes around the room, and I don't know. That that was my first time being with them. There might have been five to seven people, maybe more than that, on the order, or something, less than 10. And so they go around the room, and they go, oh, this is really good. And I went, okay. Oh, well, these guys don't know salad dressings. Okay, fine. No, <laughs> hey, don't ju don't judge, don't judge. <laughs> exactly, you're exactly right. But I'm admitting that's what I thought. And so I yeah. tried it and went, oh, this is quite, this is really good. So that's my, that's what I use now. And uh, there are other things that I add that I put in, but you know, those are like the the, the salt and the and the the sugar. No, that's no longer there. Sure. So you know that give and take. What I love about what I love about teaching and imparting these skills is also learning from people ways to sharpen what I'm doing. What's a give and take? Absolutely. So right now I'm working with AARP. I just started doing okay. something with them last week. We did a session on holiday eating and then I made a couple of meals, a, a couple. Uh, what does AARP stand for? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. It's uh, the American Association of Retired People. I'm a card carrying member of 65 now, so I'm a legit. You know, I call myself a nice. junior senior. You know, and I used to joke. At, I used to joke about this. I'm going, okay. I keep hitting brick walls about trying to get this stuff out to the VA or the hospitals, to hospital networks. No one's mm -hmm. interested in the preventative in this preventative work. And I said, all right. I said, you know what? When I come of age, I'm going to approach ARP and see what happens. So I contacted them, and they went, "This is great." Now I also told them. I'm not going to do this as a volunteer. I want to get paid to do it because it's just like the, the Safe Streets for All program. Let's pilot a program in Charlotte, not far, an hour away from me. Let's pilot a program in Charlotte, a lot of give and take. Mm -hmm. Once we have a package together, now how do we transfer this to others, to other cities or other regions in North Carolina? Mm -hmm. And ARP is a national, a national organization. How do we get right. this across the country? And then really... How do we monetize that for them to be able to present? Now, if they, if they're, if this is an AARP program, now for them as a large organization to go to hospitals and say, "How about it? You right. know, we need to support our seniors." Now that's an avenue in, into into you know the medical world, and um, yeah. I think I, you know they, they agree. I think we could have some legs. Okay, so look, like, how about we enlarge the we pull back some more look from the even broader, bigger picture. So I find it fascinating, okay, now that I'm in Savannah and I'm surrounded by, you know, I've met some really intense, young, older entrepreneurs. I've been in, in that kind of world as well. But there's something about the American can-do mindset. Like, you're somebody who's who's who tries things and are very entrepreneurial are doing like doing all these things. So how about you pull back a little bit and just speak more generally about what is it to, to kind of try to create something, right? Like safe streets for all or yeah. the rights, or you like you're, you're like a, a entrepreneurial guy with a very strong social enterprise kind of bent. So, what, where does this come from? What is this? That is an awfully good question. Where does that come from? So I have to say self-interest is a start. Regarding food, I did not know how to cook for myself. My mother gave me the joy of cooking. If 
by uh, Irma Baumgartner or something like that. But anyway, you know, it's a standard book. It's probably sold more than more cookbooks than any other cookbook, or it's one of the leaders. Well, I looked at the thing, all words, no pictures, and I had a problem with reading. And I didn't really okay. realize that or recognize that until later in life. But uh, and and I'm looking at this thing I'm going, I'm not, you know, what is it? I'm not going to do this stuff. It's way too fancy. I'm, I'm not doing that. So I started to do things on my own. And when I did, a lot of trial and error. But then I started to learn. Here's how here's how to cook things. To do what I called a, a base recipe. It's like tomato sauce with pasta. Base recipe. So wait a second. Mm-hmm. This is this is entrepreneurship. No, this is just learning on my own. This is this is the basis of that. The basis. So the base is self interest. What appeals to me? What do I need mm-hmm. to do? Where and then where is the information I can just pull off the shelf and it didn't exist. So okay, if it doesn't exist. And how about I start that? It's so the, nice. the same thing with this uh, picture book cooking. Yes, there are other people who do do picture book type cooking, more fancy stuff. What and that's fine. But mine is about here's starting. No kidding. You take any recipe and you've never learned. You've never known how to cook before. It's going to show you. And when I say put the pot on the stove, there's a picture of a pot going on the stove. Right. So everything right. is there, plain to see, and people really enjoy that. And so it's about, all right, now taking that and monetizing it. And that's been tough. That has yep. because it's, it's, it's on the fringe. People don't want that. I'm not a chef, mm. I'm not a nutritionist. Mm. And so I don't have a name already where people go, oh yeah, that guy. And now he's going to put together a cookbook. You know, yeah, that's a slam right, dunk. Right, right. So it's been about chipping away all the way and hit an obstacle, turn around, Fortunately, I seem to have uh, some longevity genes and, and keep myself in shape. So I'll live. I think I'll be able to live yep. it out. So, you know, the, the food comes from that. The cycling, self-interest. I want to be able to ride and live to tell about it. How am I going to do that? I need to work things mm. people can see. Okay. Right. But I don't see the stuff out there that actually sends a message that connects well with drivers. So make it. If I didn't find it, make it. Nice. So that's, that's where that comes from. And then at the same time, you know, on the cycling side, okay, or, you know, the traffic, the, the, in the traffic arena, how can I not just work on a business, like make, you know, iPhones or something like that, where here, I sell it to you and that's it. Mm-hmm. There's nothing else. Maybe we do charity, but that, that's it. Whereas, no, no, this is about, this is about actually in your best interest. If you wear this, you will be safer on the road. Doesn't guarantee you never Amazing. get in a car, but you're going to be safer on the road, or your loved one is going to be safer on the road. And the way I look at it is, one person wears it. That's a statement. A lot of people wear yeah. it. It's movement. Now you right. go that that stuff. You get that that wear. Safe streets for all is going on. All of that stuff put together comprehensively. Yes, my stuff is a business, but but all of that stuff put together. Now you have a no kidding real movement on multiple fronts. And this is the steepest climb, Ron, change culture. Right. Absolutely. Bruce, I think that's it, man. Like Bruce Treader, Safe Streets for All, Brights. Check out the links in the show notes. I love it. Thanks for joining. Oh, my pleasure. It's been a lot of fun, Ron. And as you said, it would be a a kick-ass conversation (laughs) both of our parts so yeah i really appreciate the time thank you oh thank you you bet so is life really a gift really can you make every second count that's the whole point of the podcast so if you like what you've seen and you're inspired because that really is my mission then please give it a like, subscribe, and share. Shooting it raw? Yes, shooting.